Hi, teacher. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. How are you? Ready. Nice. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Welcome to the class. Thank you. How was your weekend? Was nice. You know, was very nice. What about yours? Oh, nice too. Very good. The very family. Good. I went to the church after a long time okay. and was was very very kind and um i i want to share you my secret <laughs> i used to sing in the cor chorus yes. chorus yeah so uh, yesterday was the first time after a few uh, a long month years months mm -hmm. Yeah, I think months, like years. Uh, and I sang with the chorus again and was, I don't know, I felt very like, I don't know how to, to express the feeling, but it was nice. Very good. I'm very happy that you enjoy your weekend and you made many things. Yeah. But good. I'm here now and ready. Of course. For the class of today. Very well. It's a pleasure to have you here in the class. Yeah, thank you, teacher. Perfect. Let's wait just a couple of minutes. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. Thank you, Joe. Perfect. Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. I hope you had a very nice weekend. I hope you had rest. Also, I hope you have done the hours in the platform. Today, we're gonna start the second week. So, as usual, we're gonna check about the platform first. So, this is the class of today. And of course, at the bottom, you will have the question for today. And we're going to we're going to check about the attendance now. So, Ada Azucena Cáceres Mendoza. 
Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Ok, got you, uh, Wilfredo. Ok. Ah, uh, Jose Osmín, sí, lo ready. Ok. Eh. Very well, perfect. Sorry, teacher, I was filling the, the bottle of water. Okay, don't uh, sorry, worry, okay. that's fine. <laughs> okay. Let's see this one. Okay. And got you, got you, Jose Wilfredo. Good. I guess the rest, I checked them already. Okay. We're going to start the class of today. We're going to continue actually with the book. Okay. So are you able to hear me, Jose Wilfredo? Something's going on. Oh, Ana Claudia, got you. Here, I'm gonna check it to that one. Here, here is it. Okay, so now we're going to start the class and- uh, Now we're... I can hear you, teacher. I'm oh, sorry okay. to interrupt you. Oh, don't I worry, that is- join. I have to, yeah, I have to rejoin. Sometimes that happens, right? Technology is like that. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to continue with the book actually so we are still on unit one cultural diversity in the workplace how to use comments to set up parenthetical information so uh, let's see maria alejandra could you please help us reading the chart okay teacher okay um this is how to use commas to set up parenthetical information. Look at the examples in the box. Then complete the exercise below. A parenthetical element is a part of sentence that can be removed without changing its essential meaning. A culture diversity in a company, comma, so they they say comma is in need a necess necess necessity necessity a necessary necessity to further improve growth. A take comma for example comma the activities in which employees participate that facilitate 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 understanding and tolerance are different. In a fast changing world, comma, where the ability to innovate is no recognized, recognized. as the recognized as the main com competitive edge, companies edge. must fix edge, companies must seek to create more diverse teams. More diverse teams, uh -huh. The parenthetical elements in something called 
and information. Uh, this information is separate from the rest of the sentence by commas. The distinction between extra and needed information can be a subtle one. Subtle. Sort of one when in doubt, try deleting the word or, or phrase to see uh, where, whether the information is provided is merely supermental or truly necessar necessary to the sentence. Very good, perfect. Thank you, Maria Alejandra. So, so there are some parenthetical information, meaning that that information is not relevant in the sentence. So we can extract, we can delete that information and the, uh, the rest of the sentence is going to have the same meaning. It's not going to change. It's not important, but it's something that we use sometimes to emphasize or to provide further information, but not relevant information. So uh, the first one is this cultural diversity in a company. So they say, or people say, okay, is indeed a necessity to further improve growth. But if you delete that part, the part that is between the two commas, the sentence is the same. Cultural diversity in a company is indeed a necessity to further improve growth. So sometimes we use this parenthetical information just to, uh, to well, provide more information that is going to be relevant in the future or to provide any kind of information that is not relevant within the sentence, but it's going to, to show the, the paragraph or the sentence in a more beautiful way, let's say. So it's just like ornamental there, right? Take, for example, in this case, for example, is the parenthetical information. The activities in which employees participate that facilitate understanding and tolerance of difference. So if we delete, for example, no change. Take the activities in which employees participate that facilitate understanding and tolerance of difference. So we can delete, for example, and no change on the whole sentence. The last one it says, in a fast changing world where the ability to innovate is now recognized as the main competitive edge, companies must seek to create more diverse things. So if we delete the part between the commas, not change. In a fast changing world, companies must seek to create more diverse things. So the main idea is still there. The other one is a complementary idea that is not relevant. That is it. The parenthetical element is sometimes called added information. This information is separated from the rest of the sentence by commas. The distinction between extra and needed information can be a subtle one though. So when in doubt, try deleting the word. If we delete the phrase or the word between the, parent, uh, between the commas and then the sentence has an impact, then it's not a parenthetical information and we cannot delete it. We need to continue. We need to keep it there in the, in the sentence. So that is, that is the thing. So it's going to be parenthetical information only if we delete it and the sentence or the idea is going to keep the same. Other than that, it's not. We need to, to leave it there. The question, my friends, is do you have any questions? Is it clear? Yes, for me, it's okay. Clear as orchata. Good. So we are going to do the exercise, of course. Read the following sentences. Identify whether or not the feature parenthetical information. Set off the parenthetical information from the rest of the sentence, applying proper punctuation commas, of course. Compare your answers with the partner. So these are the six sentences. I'm going to give you a few minutes for you to check into that one, and then we're going to move on, okay? So I'm gonna give you a few minutes. I will be here. If you have questions, let me know.
Have you finished already? Or not? Or well, yes. Or Just not. a couple of minutes, teacher. Okay. Good, good. I'm gonna wait a little bit more. Not Thank you. Problem. Of course. Okay, have you finished already? Who wants to do number one? So, Juan Miguel, do you have a question? Mm, I think, uh, no. no. Sorry, I, I raised my hand because uh, if I can participate, it's okay, it will be okay. Okay, so let's do it like that. So when we get number one, it's just cell number two. Okay. Number one, the research and benefits of multicultural teamwork and cultural tolerance, which was published last year, has shed light on new perspectives for companies to promote a cultural diversity at work. Uh, in this case, uh, the parenthetical information uh, should be on uh, from on benefits of multicultural team until cultural tolerance. Okay, so the research comma on benefits of multicultural team work and cultural tolerance comma, which was published last year, has shed light on new perspective for companies to promote cultural diversity at work. Like that? Yeah. Let's see. We are going to delete and check if that sounds fine. The research was published last year, has shed light on new perspective for companies to promote cultural diversity at work. What do you believe, everybody? Mm, I think, teacher, that uh, maybe I put the commas between um, uh, after tolerance, 
the and cultural tolerance comma which was I agree with her. last year has shed light uh, last year comma has shed light on new perspective for companies to promote cultural diversity at work everybody yes. agrees yeah. that way yeah i yes. agree with her yeah yes you are you are right perfect so we agree yeah. so this is going to be like that so it's going to be uh which was published last year that is the parenthetical and is it possible to delete it and no problem right or not let's read it the research of benefits and cult uh, of multicultural teamwork and cultural tolerance has shed light on new perspective for companies to promote cultural diversity at work yeah it's fine it, it feels good so it's going to be like that the parenthetical is going to be which was published last year nice perfect and remember for example the uh, to always check on details, for example, the um, prepositions on benefits. It's not to benefits, it's not of benefits, it's on benefits. Those little things are also important. Uh, shed lights, what is shed? Anybody wants to say what is shed? Hello. What is shed? Shed light. Nobody? Okay. It's like to show something. It's like to? To show something that will be mm, hiding. Very good. That is nice. Perfect. That would be a very good thing on this. Number two, Giselle. Okay. Uh, the sentence said, inclusion initiative in most workplaces are usually poorly funded and disconnected from broader general training programs. Mm, I don't know if I'm okay with this one, but um, I think that maybe could be inclusion initiatives Comma in most workplaces, comma, are usually poorly funded and disconnected from broader general training programs. Okay, what does everybody say? Is that okay? In your opinion. And also think that maybe I, this one I didn't found nothing to delete. Nothing to delete. Okay. And you were saying something you saw? Yeah, I was between that because I read the um, the sentence with the parenthetical information that I think this, the parenthetical information, and doesn't sound like nice or, 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 or like the sentence is complete. So maybe I, at the end, I think that um, the, sen the sentence doesn't change. Doesn't change. Everybody agrees? Yeah. Yes, maybe. Okay, let's delete that part in most workplaces. Let's see. Inclusion initiatives are usually poorly funded and discounted from broader general training programs. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah. If you delete that in most workplaces, I mean, it's, it's not that bad, but it's, it doesn't make sense a lot mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you're talking about the workplaces. I mean, in most workplaces, it's relevant because you're talking in the majority uh, are usually poorly founded so that's good perfect good um there are no questions here number three who wants to say number three anybody yeah uh -huh. Hello. It's fine if it's not totally correct. So don't worry. We are practicing here. Maybe um, um, the comma is, is after different interpretation of event. I, I hear it is comma. 
it can lead to miscommunication. Okay, so it's a common issue among employees who speak different language. Okay, so the first comma is going to be after events, right? Right. And the second one? Language. Okay. A common issue among employees who speak a different language can lead to miscommunication. Differences in interpretation can lead to miscommunication. Okay. Everybody and the rest of the people, what do you think? What is your opinion? So inclusion initiatives in most, oh no, it's number three, right? Differences in interpretation mm -hmm. of events, a common mm -hmm. issue among employees. I believe it's until employees who speak, no, you're right, it's not there, who speak a different language can lead to, uh -huh. and the rest of the people, what do you think? Uh, Danny, could you repeat that again? Where, uh, where you put the commas? The first comma is after uh, of uh -huh. event. After event, um, the first comma, then the last comma is after language. So mm -hmm. the, the, the sentences will be um, different in, in interpretation of events can lead to miscommunication. Yeah. Uh, Difference in interpretation can lead to, oh, yeah, of events, right? Difference in interpretation this of is, events can lead to. This is not common. This is not common only among people who speak different language. Okay, yeah, you're right. You're right. And if, if you read the sentence like with that, um, I don't know how to say teacher. Um, Without like, the parent like, intonation or something like that, you could say uh, difference in, in interpretation of events. A combination of employees who speak a different language can lead to miscommunication. It's like, yeah, sounds like a compliment, this, that part. A common issue and language. I'm, I'm agreed with Danny. So uh, you agree that it says differences in interpretation of events can lead to miscommunication. Is that fine without the other part? Yeah. Okay. Different interpretation of events. To be honest with you, I believe that it's missing that part. Difference in interpretation of events, a common issue among employees who speak. Also, look at this. In my that we said, differences in interpretation of events, a common issue among employees, can lead to miscommunication. Something like that. It's a little bit more complete, I guess. It makes sense the only the, the first part and the second part. I mean, different interpretation of events can lead to communication, but I, I feel like something is missing. Yeah, it's okay. It also could be like that mm -hmm. after among employees. Among employees. Uh -huh. Who speak a different language may be something that is not relevant. I mean, yeah. it's, it's communication, it can be. I mean, and with my brothers, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And actually, differences in interpretation is a common issue among employees. I mean, you send an email, and sometimes people they don't get it, right? It's like they ask questions: Is it possible like this? Is it so? They interpret things even when the reading sometimes is kind of clear, but that happens. It's normal in human behavior. Okay, let's leave it like that. Who speak a different language, we're going to remove that part and we're gonna take the other one, okay? Number four, who wants to help us with number four? Anybody else's? Let me try to just, I don't know oh. if you hear me. I can hear you. Okay, think it's because I'm having a bad connection. Sometimes I can hear you. Maybe I, I love the, the oh, I communication, but let me try. Maybe I, what I understood is 
could be diversity, comma, when it works, comma, increases profits for a company. Or if we take up when it works, we can say diversity increases profits for a company. Okay, everybody agrees on this one? I don't know if it's, I don't know if I understood. <laughs> Actually, that is it, yeah. Yeah, I agree. When it works, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's something that it might, uh, it doesn't cause an impact. It, the diversity increases profits for a company. Uh, I agree. Yeah, that is good enough. Very good, perfect. Thank you, Ana Claudia. Number five. Okay. Anybody wants to share number five? Um, me, me. Okay, of um, course. A culturally diverse workforce. Um, I I put the comma after workforce and after a, to its counterpart. Okay, so a culturally diverse workforce, comma, opposite to its counterpart, comma, better understands diverse market. And if we remove that, uh, that part is going to be a culturally diverse workforce, better understands diverse markets. Everybody agrees? Today, you don't, you don't want to speak. Yes. Yeah, that is it, right? Very good, perfect, thank you, Danny. Number six, the last one. Who wants to help with this? Let, let me try. Of it. course. Uh, the best way to achieve a productive and diverse environment, comma, is not just leadership by example. I have a doubt if we can add a comma there and then, but through the use of detailed strategy. I'm not sure if we can add a comma after example. Okay, and the rest of the people, what do you believe? I didn't found nothing to delete. You believe that it's perfect like that? I don't know. Because it's saying that it's not just leadership, by example, but through the use of digital strategies. It is saying that it's not in only way, but two in two ways. Okay, very good. Let's see if we remove that one. It's going to be the best way to achieve a productive and diverse environment is through the use of detailed strategies. Like that, I believe is, is maybe possible. So the comma will be environment comma is not just through. Through it's not just leadership by example, comma, and but comma. But I, I agree with you, Danny. It's better with the complete thing. So it's going to keep it like that. So the best way to achieve a productive and diverse environment is not just leadership by example, but through the use of detailed strategy. Because it's missing something. It doesn't feel very well if you if you take off a little part of that one. Very good, perfect. This is, as you can see, we are learning things for you to write better. So in the future, I don't remember which level is it, we need to write essays. So uh, these, these things you need to consider whenever we get to that point. It's very, very important for you to remember because in essays, there are structures, there are rules that we need to follow. And these kinds of things are going to be important for that one, okay? So please try to remember that one and take in consideration. Good. Questions before we move on?
No questions. Clear as horchata. Okay, we are going to do a little test. This is going to be very easy. It's, it's not for like English, English, but it's about uh, cultural diversity. So uh, there is a question and there are four uh, options, like possible answers. But we're going to check also about some vocabulary here. Okay, so the question number one it says, a strong feeling or belief about a person without reviewing the facts. Aha, uh -huh. like the, the people that nowadays publish videos in YouTube and things and that just because they believe, right? Hmm. So the first option is bias or bias. You can say both way. Question, what is bias? You can look at the dictionary. And tell me what is bias. Tell your time, but please tell me. I want to know. Like partiality? Yeah, not objective, right? So you take just one side of the story. Very good. Uh, prejudice. You know what is that one? Though. What is prejudice? I have strong feeling or belief about the person we have reviewed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that is <laughs> nice. So you you say that one. It's like it's like when you how can I say that one? Just because you see something, you believe you believe that that person is like that one, right? So that is like a prize. Very good. Ethnocentric, what is that one? Look for that at the dictionary, please, and tell me. I want to know. I want to know. Was your dream? I want to sing today. Maybe I... a person who has a preferences or prejudices a... against or a favor, I don't know how to say this. In favor too. Oh, uh -huh. uh, who has a, um, some things a favor or a, some things or something against a, a group of people who are a, a, maybe look the same or maybe uh, from a same uh, um, country or, or region. Okay. So it's like a feeling against or in favor to people from some uh, ethnic, with yeah. ethnic, uh, let's say, characteristics. Very good. Uh, somebody was going to say something else about this one, ethnocentric. I found uh, a concept, teacher. Uh, ethnos, ethnos, ethnocentric. Evaluating other peoples and cultures according to the standards of one's own culture. Very good. That is very accurate, actually. So here in El Salvador, we believe the people in Europe, they don't take a shower because they use a lot of perfume, for example, right? Actually, I was, when I was working at a bank, I used to have meetings with people in Europe and my, for the perfume, I don't know, but for example, 15 days, 15 days people that came from France, they wore the same clothes. And that is not ethnocentric, I saw that one. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I, I, that that's what I thought. Wow. I mean, the second day was like, mm, okay, maybe he didn't bring a lot of clothes. I I got a lot of clothes, you know. Uh, but maybe that's the way that we are there, and maybe they are working. And they say, I don't believe that he had like fifteen same shirts or or pants. But that happened. I mean, there were three people from France, and nobody had different clothes in the fifteen days that we were together. They didn't smell bad, actually, but anyways, it was kind of strange. Um, so ethnocentric might be something about what Giselle said. Stereotyping, what is that? Uh, 
Mm -hmm. That is something that we have checked, so I know that you know. Of course, you can check for a better description on the internet. Maybe it could be an idea that um, may, many people maybe uh, have about, about something that at the end could be false or partly true or untrue. Untrue. Or something like that. Very good. Yeah, something like that one, right? It's like labeling somebody or some people or some situations. I mean, it's to label to say that is like that because I believe so. It's because I saw on the TV that that is the way it is. That is stereotyping. Good. Now the question is, what is the answer? A strong feeling or belief. Belief, that is a key word. About a person without reviewing the facts. Ah, the time has come to say which is the answer. I think that is the last one, stereotyping. Stereotyping, everybody agrees? Maybe prejudice. Prejudice, okay. And the rest of the people, we have one and one. Prejudice. Prejudice. And the rest? As I say, prejudice. <laughs> prejudice. So the majority says prejudice. Okay. We are going to check, okay? Uh, so, prejudice. Oh my goodness, it's not here. I have to, <laughs> I don't have an account with this one. <laughs> okay, anyways, but it's a good exercise and we're going to continue. But yeah, it's prejudice. I made it once and I don't remember the password for this. Very good, number two. So it says uh, the process of assuming that everyone in the same ethnic, so now you know, right? Racial or cultural group act the same, share the same beliefs or attitude, a particular group is the same. So is that one ethnicity, prejudice, ethnocentric or stereotyping? What do you believe? Anybody? The process of everything is stereotyping. Stereotyping. And everybody mm -hmm. agrees? Ethnicity? Ethnocentric. No, ethnicity? Oh, ethnicity. Okay, so what is the difference between ethnicity and ethnocentric? You can mm -hmm. type it like that in internet. What is the difference between ethnicity and ethnocentric? I'm going to do it myself as well. So we agree on this. Ethnocentric. Aha, uh -huh, ethnocentric. Yeah. Everybody agrees on that one? Yeah. I changed my mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ethnocentric. Everybody agrees? Yes. Yes. Good. Yes. So now we know that it's not the same ethnicity that ethnocentric. And what is ethnicity? Ethnicity is the, the group. Yeah, it's the group, right? It's when actually you belong to... To belong a, a, a group. La, Latin, Latin not, American ethnicity, maybe. It's, exactly. It's, it's not based on, on of the thinking, of the thought of someone. Of someone. It's the right uh, that, that is uh, belong to a group. Very well. So, ethnocentric is the, assum the assumption the belief that some people because of uh, ethnic, racial, or cultural group are the same, they have the same attitudes. But ethnicity is when actually you are part of a group, as you say, Latin America, Salvadorian people that we really like, pupusas with 
fingers. So that is it. Number three, which of the following is not one of the four basic characteristics of culture? Culture is learned, culture is shared, culture is passed down, culture is social in nature. So you can research about four basic characteristics of culture and you will find the answer. And let me know the answer. Well, actually there are five which I found, but one is not there, right? So anybody has the answer for this? Maybe, which is not part of these uh, characteristics, culture is social in nature. Social in <clears throat> nature. That is maybe because mm -hmm. uh, because we are talking about people, okay, not not about nature. Uh, yeah, that is like uh, uh, it's social in nature, meaning that if you are part of the, if you be, become part uh, of, of a social group, maybe uh -huh, then. By nature, you are going to have the characteristics of the culture, but actually that is not true. Good, very well, we're moving on. So number four, uh, classification of people based on physical or biological characteristics. Is that culture, nationality, ethnicity, or race? What do you believe is the answer? Race, race. everybody agrees? Race. race. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, it's race, right? I mean, yeah, you are part of a race. It doesn't mean that you are part of a, a culture or nationality. I mean, you can go and your parents can move to other country and you are able, I mean, you, your nationality will be different, but the race is going to be the same. Number five, the belief in the superiority of one's own ethnic group, acculturation, ethnicity, cultural diversity or ethnocentric. Maybe the first question here is, what is acculturation? Acculturation, yeah, that's it. It's when you travel to to immigrate to another country and you learn all the culture of that country. Exactly. It's like when people from El Salvador, they come back from the U.S. and they say, oh, see, so something like that one, right? Like you interact oh. with other cultures and yeah, you, uh -huh. you adapt some kind of behavior of that culture. That is it. So you adapt yourself to that behavior. Uh, because, I mean, you are part of that one. So definitely there, there will be something that is going to be part of it. Okay, so, uh, but the question is, which one is the answer? Ethnocentric, I think. Ethnocentric, everybody agrees? I agree. Okay, yeah. Yes. Of course, it's not ethnicity and of course, it's not cultural diversity. Good, number six, in regards to cultural diversity. Healthcare workers must learn to be. So this is, I guess, kind of easy. Honest, tolerant, hard workers, professional. All of them? Is there an option for that? <laughs> well, actually, yeah, it should be. <laughs> Healthcare, yeah. it doesn't matter about the cultural man. You have to be honest, tolerant, hard worker, and professional, right? Yeah, you tolerant. also. And between tolerant and professional. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I guess it would I be think tolerant. It's tolerant. Yeah, tolerant mm -hmm. might yeah. be speaking about cultural diversity because sometimes you don't you don't agree on the behavior of other people, right? Or on the beliefs or in many things, and you need to to listen and try to explain, right? I, I know that being a doctor or, or being a nurse is difficult on many aspects. Mm -hmm. so. One of, I but, have a uh, I understand that very well because one of my neighbors they they practice a religion that in case they are under a surgery or any other process uh, if it's necessary uh, uh, i don't know if the correct word is transfusion blood, mm -hmm. ah, okay blood so transfusion blood they sign up a letter saying that they agree to not uh, be under that process even though their life is under risk or they are about to die they don't accept to be uh, to be under that process they don't accept blood for from another person that is true that is a very strong belief uh, at mm -hmm. this hearing asabot is one of the ones that maybe people don't understand very much but at the end yeah we need to be tolerant right we need to try to understand maybe the problem is that in that kind of situation a doctor, they want to save a life, right? So they oh, yeah, really, it's kind of it's kind of difficult. This situation is something that maybe we can analyze later on whenever we speak about religion. But um, yeah, tolerance is is the key here, right? So, and of course, being professional, hardworking, and honest is something that we expect for that one. Uh, maybe another question is: Are nurses in El Salvador tolerant? <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I know Is that it... not uh we cannot stereotype all the nurses right yeah. because i have seen very nice nurses but there are some nurses that are not not tolerant that word is not or not patient or, or many other things anyways i know that is difficult that part number seven an extended family consists of a mother, father, and children, as well as, this is fifth grade, aunts and uncles, widows and family, grandparents, nieces and nephews. Do you remember when you were at school when you were a kid? What is the answer? Grandparents. Which one? Grandparents. Grandparents. Everybody agrees? Yeah. No. Aunts and uncles. Aunts and uncles, everybody. What do you say on this one? We have two possible options. Uh huh. I say grandparents. Grandparents. Grandparents too. Grandparents too. Okay. Uh, well, I was reading here a little bit and it says, such as grandparents, aunts, or uncles. So at this point, there are two options here, aunts and uncles and grandparents. So both, okay, okay. both are correct, okay? So the beliefs and practices of an individual regarding their truths, religion, or mm -hmm. spirituality. Religion, I would say. The belief and practices. Religion. Religion. Very good, religion. Yeah, spirituality are things that you can practice, but it's not regarding with truths or beliefs, right? Good. The number nine, the learning of the beliefs of a dominant culture and assuming some of the characteristics. What is that? Cultural assimilation or acculturation? What do you think? Cultural assimilation, I think. Cultural assimilation. Everybody agrees? No, maybe acculturation. I acculturation. think acculturation. Acculturation. Okay, everybody says acculturation. 
And yes, it's a culturation. Uh, well, but let's check the other one before we move on. Number 10, it says the absorption of a culturally distinct group into a dominant or prevailing culture. What is that one? Cultural assimilation. Cultural assimilation. Very good. Yeah, because acculturation is when you get some things, right? So characteristics. But uh, the absorption of a cultural distinct group, that is like almost totally, right? So that is cultural assimilation. Very good. Number 11, the authority figure in a matriarchal family is the oldest female, the oldest male, the youngest female, or the youngest male? The oldest the female. female? The oldest female, like the grandmother, right? Or the great grandmother, or something like that. 12, the authority figure in a patriarchal family is the youngest male, the youngest female, the oldest female, or the oldest male. The oldest male. The oldest, the oldest male. male. The oldest male. How is El Salvador? Is patriarchal or is matriarchal? Matriarchal. 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 Grandmas are the best. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> they are the majority, I would say, that they are raising their children. I think. I think it because the responsibility from the, from the par the fathers. Yeah, probably something like that. I mean, uh, even in a marriage, right? Yeah, when the wife says you have to do it like, like this, it's like okay, my my love, I will do it right. So very nice. So uh, number thirteen, what is cultural diversity awareness? A recognizing different beliefs, values, and customs that other people have that are based on their or origins or upbringing. B, everyone is the same, no matter where you come from. C, everyone is different, but they have the same beliefs and values. And D, everyone is the same, but have different value systems. Uh -huh. Let's research what is cultural diversity awareness. Letter A, maybe. Letter A, and the rest of the people, what do you think? Yeah, I think letter A. a. Very yeah, good. Okay. Yeah, since it says awareness in the question and it says recognizing in the letter A, I believe that, of course, the link is there very natural. Are recognizing different beliefs, values, and customs that other people have that are based on their origins or upbringing. Number 14, the phrase cultural diversity can also refer to having the same cultures respect each other's differences or, well, there are the, the answers there. So we're going to fill in the blanks. So which one is it? Letter C. Letter C, yeah. everybody agrees? Yes. Yeah. Very good. So yeah. that is it, right? Different cultures respect each other's differences. Of course. Nice, nice. Number 15. Cultural diversity is important because our country, workplaces, and schools increasingly consist of various. Three things are there. Letter D. Letter D, mm. cultural, racial, and ethnic. Everybody agrees? Yes. Very good. That is it. Nice. We're almost done. And we are going to check the attendance. Number 16, cultural awareness positions people to be uh -huh, less successful, less aware, more successful, or more aware in both professional and professional relationships. So.
D, more aware. Yes, letter D. D, D. more aware. Everybody agrees? Yes. Yes. Okay, yeah, that will be a, a good answer. I was more inclined to letter B, more successful in both personal and professional relationship. But yeah. answer seems to fit for me, to be honest, is more, more successful because if you uh, have awareness cultural, then your personal life and your professional relationship is going to be better, right? That's my point of view. But more aware, it fits as well. So that's good. Number 17, language, dress, stories, food, music, and dance are part of everyone's culture. Culture. Everybody agrees? Culture. Yeah, culture. Yeah. Culture. Very well. Number 18, the way of life shared by a group of people is called. Civilization. Culture. Culture. Culture or civilization. The way of life shared. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's culture. Culture, right? Yeah, definitely. That is culture. We agree. Number 19. This word means in which people are different. Uh -huh. Diversity. Diversity. Good. Diversity. Nice. And number 20. Sharon is interested in learning about the people of Kenya. She begins a research paper and sends off for information from the Kenyan government. Sharon is exhibiting which of the following terms? Multiculturalism, ethnocentrism, cultural sensitivity, or counterculture. You can research about those topics so you can tell me the answer. Yes. What's the meaning of counterculture, teacher? Okay, let's research on counterculture, everybody, and tell us, please. What is that? He said that counterculture is a way of life and set and set of attitudes opposed to or at variance with the prevailing social norm. Very good. So that is it. It's like when you have, you know, that is very common in, in the movies in the United States when they say this is part of the counterculture. So it's opposing to the culture, to the government or something like that. It's something that is, is opposing. You say, I don't like that. I'm going to do, I'm going to be different. But there are a group of people that are doing the same. So there are, uh, it's like a counterculture. So which is the answer for this one? Anybody? Of course, it's not counterculture, right? Mm -hmm. And you know already what is ethnocentric. Maybe teacher, um, cultural sensitivity? Cultural sensitivity, everybody agrees? Sensitivity, oh yeah, sensitivity. What do you think? I think cultural sensitivity. Cultural sensitivity. Very good, perfect. It will be cultural sensitivity. That is the correct answer. Very nice. So this is for us to learn a little bit more about some, some words, some um, uh, things that are related with diversity and all the topics that we are studying right now. 
Of course, uh, we're going to check the attendance because the time has come. So here we go. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present teacher. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present. Present. Ah, okay. Present teacher. Good, good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Present teacher. Good. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Good. I got you, Roxana. Very well. Okay, okay. We are going to continue. Let me just check the chat because I have Ada. Oh, Ada is here, okay. So I'm going to check into this. And... Teacher, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I don't know why the, the sounds when you will say my name just break it down. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's kind of strange. Something yeah, strange. Something but don't worry. Uh, I have seen here that you're here. So now I, I noticed that one and I'm going to be careful. In this. Okay. Okay, very good. So now we're going to discuss, you know, that we're speaking about many things here. And this is a topic that is part of the, of this, uh, everything that we're speaking about diversity. So the question for everybody is, uh, is sexual orientation important nowadays? Your opinion, my friends. We're going to respect everybody's opinions, of course. The important is to practice English. So I want to listen to you. Is it important, sexual orientation nowadays? I think this topic is kind of um, controversial. I'm sorry? This topic is controversial because uh, there are some places who this, this uh, topic, this sexual orient orientation is uh, it's not important uh, or they consider it's not important, but when people go to the, maybe to an interview or to a, uh, or to the first day uh, in, in, the, in the job, if they are not, or if this, this person is not uh, the way that you, that you was hoping, uh, or, or may, not you, I mean uh, people from human resources or another people in, in the office, uh, this person could be discriminated because of this. Is, is uh, yeah, it's controversial, but <clears throat> the, um, the objective must be if you are, uh, if you, how to say this? If you feel the requirements of the of the position, why why will uh, the other people 
judge you. Okay. Uh, if you feel the requirements, must be your position or, or must be uh, give to you the position that uh, the company is looking for, but uh, people say that is not, is not, uh, um, it's, it's not important, but <clears throat> at the end for, for our culture, who, which we are uh, not open-minded, at the end is it's, it's kind of important. Yeah, actually, it's a very important topic. I mean, um, maybe uh, the thing is that uh, in the past, I believe, and this is just my opinion, in the past, uh, at, at least at work was not a big deal because the most of the people that they have different orientation, different sexual orientation, they didn't say it, they didn't show it, right? But nowadays, that is very common. They are uh, proud uh, but then, yes, sometimes at work, it's kind of complicated, right? Because it shouldn't be, as you say, if the people are able to do the job, if the people, I mean, are professional and they have everything, all the requirements, it shouldn't be a problem. But even though there are problems, right? So that is happening, still happens. So. So at the end, we can say that sexual orientation is important, right? Either you accept it and it's not, it, does, it doesn't matter for your job or even if, even worse, if, if it's important for you to be the night to, to get a job. So it's important. So in a negative, in a positive way, in both ways, it's important. Uh, any other person wants to share something? I think, teacher, that it's also important to talk about this topic maybe in schools because when you don't have the enough information, maybe kids can grow with the wrong information. So it's our responsibility as a, as a society to, to teach to the future, future generations that, yeah, maybe it's okay to 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 uh, accept other people that maybe doesn't the um, maybe doesn't act or look like you maybe because I think I I'm a, a girl maybe but maybe my neighbor feel different and maybe my kids see that my that my that or neighbor is different but it's very important to to that, to teach the kids that, yeah, it's not wrong, but um, yeah, have like the enough information so they can grow uh, with uh, their own opinion about the topic, but always, um, uh, always maybe, I don't know how to say it. Um, uh, that it's very important not to judge the others, you know, maybe that because nowadays there are a lot of information on the internet. Uh, we can see that in the movies nowadays, we can see this topic about the, the sexual orientation is very, very, I forgot the word, um, common, yeah, common, and TV series, movies, a literature or uh, modern literature, maybe too. And yeah, maybe that we can't avoid the topic for forever. So now it's important to talk to talk with the children in the future generations about this. Very good. I, I totally agree. I mean, I believe that at the end, uh... It's not, I mean, it, the, the thing is the respect, right? You can be whatever you want as long as you respect my space and uh, what I do. And uh, it shouldn't be important regarding jobs. 
Uh, it shouldn't be important about politicians or things like that one, as long as they are still professional and as long as they they do the right thing. I mean, that that will be it. And yet uh, education at school, it should be something that is pushing. And you are right also, that is also very interesting. And nowadays in movies, I mean, the United States, uh, they are pushing a lot about this one. Um, I remember about the movie, right? Uh, Buzz Lightyear. It was a big controversy. Very I didn't. Funny. See... Yeah, it was. It was <laughs> a big thing. Okay. So the thing is that it was a big controversy. Because of kids, a lot of people, they have different opinions, right? Some people believe that it was a movie for kids. And why? Why? There is something, at least something little that is pushing, right? It was too much for some people. And some other people, they say it's just a kiss. So it's not sexual interaction, right? It's like just a kiss and that's it, right? Um, at the end, I didn't see the movie because it was not... I didn't feel it uh, interesting, the whole movie. So I didn't watch it. And I believe that that happened. I mean, a lot of people, they didn't want to see it just because it was not a big deal. But it was a big controversy. Maybe that, that is one of the problems. That's why sexual orientation nowadays is a big deal because people like to fight sometimes about these things, even when it's not you. They like to go and say your opinion, and other people say it's a different opinion. And that is that is the real problem. Their respect. At the end, it's not the sexual orientation, but it's that I mean you have your own opinion and you're fine. If you don't want to see the movie, that is fine. And if uh, other people they want to see the movie, that is fine. It's it's not a big deal. But to have a fight about a, a movie that maybe you will never see, yeah, it was kind of kind of difficult and these uh, these are the things that are happening nowadays i mean uh, fighting uh, about many things about opinion about what it should be done maybe there are some people uh, that they want to attract the attention and they do some other things that are kind of not uh, i mean it's, it's kind of difficult to assimilate things for example i was reading on the news that a woman got married with a uh, with a an airplane, and then she got divorced of the airplane. I mean, that is a little a little bit beyond of what is like any kind of sex, sexual orientation. So, um, so then starts again the controversy and many things because people are pushing in one way, and other people are pushing in another way. Anybody wants to say another opinion about this? Me, uh, I I will add that it's very very important to. Uh, have the communication uh, in both ways, parents with uh, children and vice versa. Why? Because uh, for the kids, uh, her or his parent must be the first person to talk to or ask in case they have a, a question about it. And there is, I don't know if nowadays, but I remember uh, these type of these kind of topics uh, they were like a taboo in some um, we can say uh, years ago like for example if we're talking about uh, millennials they are open with all of this and like we are uh, the our our group is uh, if we go for the one for the 80s and beyond I'm sorry, the, the 70s and beyond, uh, we are, we were uh, educated under this uh, uh, idea that you don't have to talk these type of things at home because it's a sin, it's a taboo, it's a prohibited topic. And what happened, what that caused is that uh, kids or teenagers were looking information in the ground places. That is why maybe uh, they, there are some the 
I can say mental illness or mental, they are not illness or disease. They are like, um, uh, I don't know, I, mental, um, how can I say, I don't know if it's correct to say a transtorn, something like that? Yeah. Ah, transtorn, yeah. right, okay. Okay, and they think that what they believe is true and that must be the reality and some others must think the same way on that. And the easy way to make people to believe in what they believe is the reality is uh, playing with the mind of the children. And you can name games, TV shows, songs, even though uh, uh, those, uh, these uh, songs for children, uh, they sometimes have a letter, they have letters that, lyrics, I'm sorry, they have lyrics that is scary. They are talking not only sexual things, they are talking about uh, killing themselves. Um, for that reason, I think the, the most important thing is communication. And because if the trust, the trust in, in both way, because if you trust that you can find an answer in your parent and not a, a judgment, when you are asking or looking for something, you feel comfortable and you feel open doors in order to ask for something else and avoiding, that would be the best way to avoid that kids look for another information. Another issue that I've seen with my nephews and, and my niece is that they are very, influenced in uh, their kindergarten uh, even though you're trying to uh, educate uh, your kids in a one way they are influenced for the other ones and or other type or other belief of other boys and girls and it, that is something that they must uh, face on a daily basis and they need to deal with that, deal with that ambiguity, I would say. And they need to have strong beliefs, beliefs in order to defend what the whole family believe. And after, I think maybe when they grow up, they are, like uh, uh, 21 years old or maybe 18 years old, or, or when they learn to decide what is good or what is bad for them, and they learn that their decisions are their responsibility and the effects of their decisions are their responsibility. So in, those, in that time, they can change their mind and remove or, or take away what they were raised, they believe they were raised, it's okay. But communication is very important. Very good, perfect. Thank you, Ana Claudia. Actually, you are mm -hmm. right. You say two things that are very important. Communication, definitely. And it's not uh, only parents speaking with kids. You need to be confident. I mean, you have to educate your kids in a way that they trust in you and they tell you, Maybe not everything because maybe that is not possible. But the most important things, the way they feel, the way they are. For example, basic things as if somebody is bullying them at school, sometimes mm -hmm. they, they do not go and tell their partners because they are afraid. Or mm -hmm. uh, even worse, something is not correct some, uh, happening at school or mm -hmm. at, on the street. And so they need to trust in you first, right? And of mm -hmm. course, maybe the parents the other on the other side and they need to listen and try to understand try to accept mm -hmm. anything that they might say right i mean they can say whatsoever uh and uh, that is very important communication and another thing that also you say that is very important is and it's totally true is that they get influenced since they're mm -hmm. kids i mean and nowadays it's even worse because now 
they they get influenced not only by the kids school or the friends but also by the media i mean they mm -hmm. watch videos in youtube they, they speak a lot of things they are other social media where they can learn many things i mean and uh, depending on the way that they do things that they learn things uh, they are going to act or maybe they are going to misbehave in some way so that is mm -hmm. that is very important and it's something we need to take in consideration definitely mm -hmm. good anybody else's please remember to practice english you need to speak Anybody else's? Okay, so let's see. I have other question for you. What is sexual harassment? Me again. Um, of course. I think this, <laughs> <laughs> this term is very common in the call center environment. Yeah. <laughs> because sexual harassment refers when somebody it tells you something and you feel violent on your rights, your area, or maybe they are using words, and, but also they act. Uh, with uh, an appropriate behavior with the person. And I've seen a lot of people that they were, um, I, oh my God, I have amnesia today. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were fired, fired uh, because of sexual arising issues uh, between colleagues, between team members. And maybe because this the, the one man touched in a, in an appropriate way to a, a woman, or maybe just they just uh, say um, sayings that maybe they are common for one person but not for the other one, and situations like that. Uh, that is what I've seen that term has been used in the call center environment. Very good, that is it. I mean, it's inappropriate approach of one person to another one. So it's when when they say something or even worse, when they try to approach in a physical way, in a way that you consider that is it's not good, right? It's not correct. Anybody else's sexual harassment? Hello. I can also say that sexual harassment um, happens not only maybe in the workplace, happens in this is maybe in a social, um, yeah, in the social um, interactions maybe, or in the society in general or in other professional areas? That is true, actually. I mean, at work, maybe uh, you can do something about it. But if you, for example, yeah. uh, if you are at a party, uh, I mean, there many things can happen, right? When you are walking on the street. On the street. I believe women uh, are the ones who suffer that a lot. I mean, uh, because, I mean, women are so beautiful and but there are some people that they don't some men of course they they say something that is not appropriate make feel yeah. uncomfortable in many situations so um, that is that is a big problem i believe that for women is difficult even in the social media i mean in facebook if you upload a picture i mean if you go to the beach for example that is normal thing you go to the beach and you took some pictures and you look beautiful and you upload a picture and then, uh, I mean, 
uh, problems come, all right? So of course that depends on the kind of people that you have there, but maybe there is always somebody that is saying something and it's like, okay, I, I uploaded the picture just because the, the beach was beautiful and uh, very nice, right? But it's not that I'm looking for somebody, right? So I believe that there is a, a big problem as well. Any other comments? Any other person? Also, maybe there is, uh, I mean, uh, there are behaviors or there are things that may be a misunderstanding, right? I will tell you an experience. Um, a friend of mine, he was very nice. And in the team, I mean, we were like 20 people. There was this girl that she was very beautiful. She was actually a model that appears on TV and things like that. And then uh, one day, I mean, they never spoke. And it was like they did their duties in the sets. And one day he came with pancakes, with a bag of pancakes. And he gave a pancake to everybody, everybody in the office. But when he got to her and he offers the pancake, she says something like, um, what is this about? And he said, well, it's a pancake. And she said, but why are you giving that to me? I'm giving that to everybody, he said. And then she says, oh, I can't accept that one. If I accept that one, you will believe that I will owe you a favor or something like that. So I'm not that kind of girl, she said. And he was like, I'm sorry, but I was not pretending anything, right? Immediately, I mean, he did the right thing. Immediately he where he 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 was going to the to the bus and he said, This happened. I did this, she says this. I, I didn't want any problems. I mean, I gave this to everybody. So nothing else happens. But the situation was kind of strange. I don't know. Maybe she has suffered those kind of things of her life or uh, maybe she didn't like him she misunderstood the situation but imagine what happens if she stands up if she goes to human resources and she says a side of a story that was not true maybe the other guy has been fired i mean many things might have happened so Sometimes that happens as well. Sometimes uh, some people misunderstand things and get in trouble with other people because of that. Has something like that has happened to you or have you seen something like that before? I have an opinion, teacher. Go ahead. Yeah, it's sexual harassment. It's a, it's a big problem in our society, and it's necessary. the The companies has a political on work environment about policies. that. Oh, policies, right? Policies, but like you say, it's it's complicated because sometimes uh, women's abuse of that and cause um, misconceptions. And it's complicated because uh, it's only a word. There is no proof, video proof or something like that that uh, prove that the the demand is guilty. But sometimes it's only a misunderstanding, like you say, like the experience that you say us, but. It, it, it's complicated because human beings are <laughs> we are this we take advantage of of all as possible <laughs> so i don't know it's a it's a topic that always had been a problem and it will be a problem in the future in the present so it's complicated fix that yeah uh you are very right in something that you say i mean and human beings, we are a little bit complicated sometimes. 
and we are different. I mean, everybody's different. If you say something, and that can happen even to girls. I mean, if a girl goes to the office and she says, oh, you look very handsome today. I mean, maybe the other person is going to feel like, oh my goodness, something's going on here, right? So misunderstanding can happen. And uh, I mean, sometimes you are trying to be nice. You're trying to, uh, to be a good friend, to socialize, you know. You say a compliment and it's not just because you believe uh, that you are going to have an opportunity of having something with the other person. Sometimes that happens. Of course, I believe the majority of the people we are able to identify, you feel it, right? I believe that most likely girls, when somebody says something, you feel, you feel the way that they are saying things. And the most of the girls is like respectfully, uh, no, thank you, or uh, try to avoid that person, right? That's like the normal behavior. Uh, but uh, it's also complicated. I mean, because, yeah, I mean, you can be respectful, but you cannot be serious all the time. Sometimes you laugh, sometimes you uh, go out with the team or with your friends and things like that. And uh, of course, you look for friends that you feel comfortable with. Uh, but at the end, if something like that happened, maybe the first thing is to check if this is a misunderstanding and then uh, see if, um, I mean, if there is a behavior, of course, you need to act and do something about it to avoid any problems. Good, good. Okay, any other comment? How can we avoid? sexual harassment or uh, misunderstandings on this case? How can we avoid these kind of things? Mm -hmm. Teacher, I have, a, I have a, something to, to share with, with all of you. Okay. Uh, for this topic, sec, uh, no, se sexual ha harassment. Harassment, yeah. Harassment. Uh, I think it's... Uh, Sometimes uh, men, uh, obviously, we, we see the women, okay? And uh, um, how to say this? In occasions, uh, the, the way that the women uh, take the compliment, it depends. Uh, from uh, from which is telling uh, them the situation and the way that the that the people say to to them. Okay, it's not the same that, uh, for example, you you tell to your coworker, uh, "Hey, you look pretty today," and that's all. Uh, but it's not the same. Oh, you look like heaven, the place that I want to be there, okay? Or something like that, okay? Yeah. Um, and uh, obviously not all the women in, in, the, in the company or in the place that you work uh, could have or could uh, be open-minded, okay? But... Um, I think a good way to avoid this kind of, of situations, if you want to tell them to the women, uh, do it in a, obviously in a respectful way, but um, just only if they, if, they, if women um, um, uh, let you do this, okay? Because, uh, like you said before, maybe a, a girl is a coworker and is a part of a team. And you know, I think you know your people uh, by the way you uh, behave with them, okay? And uh, you can joke with them. And if, uh, and you have to know uh, the borders or the limits that you want that you don't have to cross with them okay 
uh, obviously you are co-workers, you're not a, a love partner to something like this, okay? And you have to difference this kind of situations because in, in the job, they could be misunderstood. And <clears throat> if, if the, if the two, the two parts or if, or if the two sides, they don't clarify the situation, it could be uh, on a second step in a, in a really bad situation. Uh, obviously for men, okay, because uh, maybe you told uh, something that was not correct or something that um, it hurt not um, in a good way, okay. And obviously they had to, they have, they should have policies uh, like being respectful, uh, all of you are at the same level or something like this, but in this kind of situations, I think you have to, um, to know what borders you don't have to cross or you must not cross, okay? And for the, for the other hand, uh, in this case, women, but in general, uh, we are talking about everyone, uh, you have to establish what limits uh, you don't let people cross in order to not uh, to not being uh, bad or something like this and uh -huh. um, I think it could be a, a, a way to to avoid this kind of situation very good perfect thank you so that is right I mean most of the times, if a man says a compliment to an, a woman, it's because you are friend. I mean, even at work, it's because you have confidence, right? Uh, even women, they come and say, look, I bought some new shoes, for example, or a new dress. Of course, you, I mean, you have to say, hey, you look beautiful or anything like that. Uh, and you are right. So depending on the way that you say, I mean, if every day you go and say you look beautiful, I mean, that is something different, right? But if once in a while you say, oh, you look different today, you look like very happy, you look like shiny or anything like that, it would be a good idea. So there are many things that you can say, but not necessarily physical or, um, I mean, respect is very important in all the levels. So uh, it's something that is kind of complicated because uh, as I was telling you, I mean, maybe you are nice and you want to say something, but maybe some misunderstanding, maybe many things might be happening. At the end, being respectful is the best. I mean, we can laugh, we can share, we can speak about many things and just be careful with some comments that we can say just in case something happened. Get to know the other persons as well. I mean, I guess the women, they know when somebody says a compliment in a nice way, it's like, oh, okay, thank you. And that's it, right? It was a compliment and she felt nice that she looked gorgeous and that's it. And the same happens with men. We know with friends, where can we say something? Which situation we can say something? Or maybe even if we believe that the girl is beautiful with that dress, maybe it's better not to say something if you believe that may cause a problem. So getting to know people is very, very important. And also being respectful. No matter what happened, being respectful and... Uh, and the it, man. Uh, at the end, that is going to be the most important. Any other comment? Before I we... think, Go ahead. Um, a way that you can avoid um, above all um, misunderstanding, right? So, okay. And it could be the, the root. And I think Mm, you could just be a good co-worker and get along with with you with the peers and uh to re refrain to make something or, or or a compliment to the to the physical appearance to the 
to your 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 peers and you get along with with them in just that respect I think. yeah i believe that that is it that is it to be respectful to to get along with everybody and have fun do what you have to do at your job and that's it maybe there is a major problem when you really like the girl i mean or when the girl likes the boy right so when it's like uh, something that is like very special uh, maybe there is something different but i mean policies at work is that you don't have to have a relationship there right that is one of the most common policies no relationship here if you want to fall in love with a girl or with a boy you need to resign one of the person has to go and then you are free to do whatever you want so that is what happens very good any other person Okay, so we are going to check a video and then we're going to comment at that one. So that is going to be the last activity for this class. Okay, here we go. Since not all of us can travel the whole world, Fact Point has brought the entire world to you. In this very interesting video we will tell you about different cultures from different societies which you may find even shocking. So let's get started. Number 1. Croatia. Croatia is popular for its national parks, beaches, and of all the things. The coastal country is also famous for its Game of Thrones appeal. But, if you are traveling in this Eastern European country, depending on where you are from, it might shock you when you learn that if you plan to stay there, it is expected from you to clean not only your own house but also the street outside of your house. There is a reason why the country is famous for its clean streets and communal civil pride. Croatia is not exception, countries like Spain too have similar culture. Number 2. I don't want coffee. Wait. Now I want. In Ireland, it is considered rude to accept any food item from the host the first time it is being offered by them. Even if you are being offered a mouth-watering treat, pretend to decline the offer. You will be asked once again, and this time, it's absolutely okay to accept it. It might sound a weird practice, especially if you are from country like US, where a no would mean a no and agreeing the other time might make you come off as a weird fluctuating person. Number 3. The country with no traffic rules. Food is not the only thing Lebanon is famous for. Talk to any traveler who have been to the Lebanese Republic, they would tell you that there is virtually no traffic rules at all, in the Middle Eastern country. Even if there seem to be traffic rules, everyone is speeding around you and the rules are not enforced at all. Needless to say, there are countless accidents every day on the roads of Lebanon. Number 4. Bishkesh. In Jordan, Iran and many Arab countries, if someone compliments about something you are wearing, it is considered rude at your part to not offer the same thing immediately to the person who originally complimented you. In Iran, this tradition has got its name and is called, Bishkesh. One traveler shared an incident that occurred in one of the Jordan hotels where unaware of this tradition, he complimented waiter's watch and the waiter immediately unlatched the watch and tried to push it on the traveler's hand. If you want to accept the gift, don't say yes before you have said no at least thrice. That's another aspect of this norm. Good luck. Number 5. Being friendly towards strangers. If you are from the United States, nothing special in here for you, move on. But, if you are not aware of the US culture, prepare yourself for a cultural shock when you land in the America and suddenly people you don't even know you are smiling at you. They might even ask you how's your day going and not even bother to listen your reply. And, similarly, if you are an American traveling in Europe and trying to be friendly with random strangers on the streets, Prepare yourself for receiving weird looks. It's fascinating how opposite two cultures can be. Number 6. Rush hours in China and Japan. Talking about opposites, 
It would be quite interesting to discuss how the crowd treats you in China versus how it treats you in Japan. You will find countless travelers telling you how in China, during the busy hours, everyone is pushing, cutting the line, breaking the queue and seem in hurry. They might not care even if you are a traveler. The reason is fairly obvious, China has a huge population and if you are planning to stand there and wait for your turn, you will never get an opportunity. Now when it comes to Japan, you would find yourself at the totally opposite end of the spectrum. Number 7. India. If the word diversity could be represented as a country, India would be the answer. The South Asian country has diversity in every form. The country itself is a concoction of different cultures. While there is a lot to talk about India, one cultural difference which might catch your eyes and might even shock you, especially if you are not Asian, is the sight of grown-up men walking around holding their hands, which might illusion you into thinking they are homosexuals, but in reality it is a fairly common way to express your friendliness in India, and the men are just being brothers. Number 8. Tolerance towards public drunkenness. If you are a Brit, or familiar with streets of Britain, you probably know that public drinking is taken casually and considered normal there. But the attitude towards public drunkenness when compared to Europe is totally different in the States. So much so that asking for beer in a restaurant might invite stares and a lecture on, Sir this is a family restaurant. Let us know in the comments what do you feel about either of the cases. Number 9. Nap time in Spain. When you visit Spain as a tourist, roaming in the Spanish street in the afternoon would make you realize that you are probably alone and nobody is around with all the shops closed. This time after the midday meal till 4 pm is also called siesta time in Spain, and in these early hours of afternoon you would probably find no one in streets or in the shops except for probably you yourself. Number 10. Balinese Funerals. If you are new to Bali, funeral processions might look like a party or wedding to you. Funeral procession in the Indonesian island are full of food, music and songs. They are very expensive too. Often the body is buried inside a container till arrangements for funeral can be done, or the auspicious day arrives. Balinese funerals are very expensive and the body may be interred until the family can afford it or until there is a group funeral planned by the village or family when costs will be less. Additionally, if the departed was a court servant, member of the court or minor noble, the cremation can be postponed up to several years to coincide with the cremation of their prince. Cultures can vary greatly. Did we miss your country? Why don't you share with us in comment section below. If you found this video interesting. Okay, any comments on the video? Any opinions? Okay. Yep. I, I wonder why we only adopt the language and the religion from Spain. What happened with the nap day? <laughs> that is a good one, right? In mind that you say, I'm sorry, it's closed because I had to take a nap. <laughs> yeah. And it's we true, right? Nap. Yeah. <laughs> it, should be, it should be a good thing. I mean, uh, you know that people here says after lunch, oh, I want to go to sleep. So... But yeah. it's not possible, right? You know, to, yeah, it's, to happened. <laughs> it's happened to me all the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, it's a good, it's a good question. Okay, yeah, we need to take into consideration. We need to <laughs> check into that. Any other comment? Something that mm, that I was like, mm, I don't know, my blowing <laughs> for me was the the lemon. The, the eleven, I think uh -huh. uh, they don't have traffic light or traffic signals. What? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. Wow. I mean, here in El Salvador, people are, are kind of crazy the, sometimes, but yeah. not like that one, right? <laughs> the strongest laws is is right there. Yeah, a lot of accidents. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that is that is crazy. That is crazy. Not having traffic rules i mean with you with your car i mean not good at all 
Any other comment, my friends? Anything that you have seen in there? In the video that it was interesting or was kind of strange? The interesting thing is the first one in Croatia when it's a beautiful country <laughs> here where he is King's Landing from Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, and is the the ring something like that the name i think i <laughs> maybe it's, but i i can remember what is the name and but um, you have to clean the, the street outside your place or your home or your hotel very interesting interesting i mean culture cultures are totally different some have very good things that you can say we should do that one here, right? And some other like the traffic in Lebanon, definitely not. Good. Any other person? No more comments. Okay, my friends. So then we're going to finish. We're going to check the attendance. The 101 of today is going to be for Heidi. And uh, Remember to continue uh, doing the platform. Uh, by now, I guess there is no homework because this is the second one. Yeah, and so tomorrow will be just the conference and then the, the homework. So, Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Good, got you. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present, teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present, teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present, teacher. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Teacher. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present. Teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present. Teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Present, teacher. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Roxana. And uh, Suleyma Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very good night see you tomorrow and rest very well in dreaming english of course thank you teacher thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. thank you thank you see you tomorrow Hello, Heidi, how are you? Good evening, teacher, how are you? I'm very well, very tired, but I'm very nice. I'm very happy to be here with you. Well, thank you. I have just come home. We have a little trouble at work today. Ah, uh, really, but you were able to fix it? Uh, not really, it's that a cashier missed about $500. Oh my goodness, that's not and good. And we didn't find it. We didn't so if, find them. Mm -hmm. I remember that when I was working at the bank, uh, if the cashier mm -hmm. didn't find the money, she has to pay, right? She has to pay, exactly. Yeah, that's the way it is. And 500 After hours. eight days. After how many days? After eight days. 
I'm sorry, but anyways. <laughs> yeah, it's so sad. That happens. Well. But I see, I, I think we'll find it. I, um, I hope we will find it tomorrow. Okay. okay. Yeah, I hope that as well because we're losing that amount of money just because it's not good. Mm -hmm. right. You know, I'm, I'm traveling to Lima on Wednesday. Really? That is amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. That's good. I have never been there, to be honest with you. Neither I have. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. How many days are you going to stay there? Five days. We're leaving on Wednesday and coming back on Sunday. Ah, okay. That's good. Good enough. So you're on vacation. A little vacation. Just two days of vacations because uh, since... Since the September 15th is, is Independence Day, we're going to take only two days. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, okay. We are we're going with uh, 30 branch managers. Okay, very good. And uh, so you are going to go to, only to Lima? Only to Lima. Okay. We're not going to the Machu Picchu teacher. Yeah, that's the one that I would like to go, Machu Picchu, and the desert, you know, oh, with the figures. <laughs> I guess we are too old for that. <laughs> yeah, working a lot, right? It's like very beautiful, uh -huh. but I, I will never come back. <laughs> but, well, we're going to, um, we're flying to Costa Rica, mm -hmm. and then Colombia, and then Lima. So it's yeah. going to take a lot to, to get there. So you are getting the vaccinations because you have to go there, right? Yeah, we already got them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is true. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, that is nice. Uh, I'm very happy that you are going to get there. Of <laughs> course, you are going to see a lot of beautiful flowers there. Yeah, I got a lot of expectations. <laughs> <laughs> very good. And is it possible for you to bring some, maybe two plants from there or is the country doesn't allow that? I, I don't think they allowed it to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I will see them. Yeah, yeah, that is good enough. <laughs> or maybe, right, just, or maybe they are allowed to bring seats, maybe. Ah, oh, that is a good, yeah, that is a good idea. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. you, have, you have a plan. Mm -hmm. eh? <laughs> uh <-huh>. <laughs> Very <laughs> good. Right. That's nice. Very good. I'm very happy for you. That's that's good. Yeah, we're happy too. <laughs> we're gonna have a lot of fun. Yeah, I know. That's to travel is always fun. That is nice. Mm -hmm. And um, well, about English, do you have any question about any topic from these or the previous courses? Not really, teacher. Okay. Not really. Very good. And uh, well, you remember that whenever you have a question, you can chat with me and directly or uh, in the group. And if you have questions, of course, well, you always ask. That is very good. Yeah. Oh, and thank you, teacher, for your help. Oh, it's a pleasure, you know. Uh, you know, this module, I've been trying to, to change some things so we are more, more speaking. Maybe the problem is you're, that some yeah. people, they don't speak. And you're <laughs> making us speak a lot. Yeah, I like that, you know. I like <laughs> to make people think and provide opinions and things like that. That is something that I really like. <laughs> and, you know, because I, I learn, I learn from you. So that is something that is amazing. And and those those questions are are uh, kind of we're getting ready for the talk. Well, I as I understand what you're gonna do is the talk. Um uh -huh. In the talk, you don't need to write an essay, um, just in the TOEFL. Mm -hmm. But in the in the talk, I mean, the talk has like as I remember, like six parts, and then uh, there are some parts that are like like grammar, right? Which is the word that mm -hmm. belongs to the sentence, which is the opposite of these things like that, and then mm -hmm. the listening. Maybe the difficult part of the listening is that they play it only once. If you get it, that is fine. And if you didn't get it, don't think about it. Move to the mm -hmm. next. And uh, the problem is that sometimes you listen to an audio and you have to answer two or three questions from the same audio. Mm -hmm. And then uh, mm -hmm. that's sometimes kind of difficult. Uh, but then the rest is, is easy. There are some emails. There are some uh, things that are related to work. So it's mm -hmm. more 
work related. TOEFL is more related to, um, to studies when you want to go and study abroad. So there are words like mm -hmm. chemistry and things like mathematics and things like that, but not in the, in the talk is, is kind of easy. Oh, you know, I already did that test, but a long time ago. I really long, did. The TOEIC? No, TOEFL. Ah, the TOEFL. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in my opinion, TOEFL is a little bit more difficult than TOEIC. TOEIC is easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's yeah, a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I remember, it's going to be like, you can take a maximum of 900 points. Mm -hmm. Oops, oh, there is an insect there, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, where, yeah. where is the teacher gone? <laughs> yeah, there was a bug, but then it, it escaped. I have to look for that one later on. So it's going to be very easy. I believe, I don't remember if here in the academy, you get prepared for that one. Uh, but if not, you can chat with me and I can send you some. You know, I have a CD okay. that I can copy and I can Is send you. Is there any any app where you can practice or something? No, it should be. I had, I, I remember that I had this CD that is a whole exam. There are two tests there. The whole thing that you can practice mm -hmm. uh, so you understand what it's going to be like. And then, but I believe, I mean, in my opinion, you have a very good le level of English and your everything will be good for you. I, I am sure about that one. Anyways, it's a good idea to practice. So, Thank you. so whenever yeah, the, the, the time comes, just let me know. I'm going to look for the CD because I have it somewhere. I don't remember where, but I have it. And then, uh, or I can research if there is an app. Actually, I'm I can research nowadays. Maybe online, you can do it. You can listen there and mm -hmm. do some practice and test. So that that is possible. Mm -hmm. But okay, you will be. Teacher, fine. thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for your help, teacher. Ah, it's a pleasure. So, and do you have any other question for me? Anything else? No, not really. Okay, perfect. So, uh, okay. and I, well, I have a last question for you. When you are then in, in in Peru, are you going to connect to the class? Yes, I am. Okay, perfect. Very well. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. Very nice. If you have the time, you can show us the place. So that would be good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I guess Claudia is over there right now. You know. Really. Yeah, she didn't tell you. No, she didn't. She didn't say anything. I guess she's already, she was going to the Machu Picchu, I guess. Oh my goodness, that's a good experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, mm -hmm. you took a tour or you just planned your trip and that's it? We planned it. Ah, okay. We planned it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is better because it's cheaper, right? Yeah, but we're taking tours too. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, then in the city. Mm -hmm. Okay, very in good. The city good. And, and, uh, I guess we're going to go to this kind of, oh, oh. Of, of the shirt. Ah, okay, very good. That, it's going to be very nice. I'll send you pictures, okay? Yeah, that the, the shirt <laughs> is the one that I would like to do because I know that there are some figures, right? That are very yeah. antique. And we don't know what happened, where it comes from. So that is the place uh -huh. that I want to go. I will go someday. <laughs> okay. Okay, perfect. It was a pleasure. Okay, I you. have a nice trip. Be careful and you, see you tomorrow then. Take care. See you tomorrow. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>